Good morning, this is Burnray, and welcome back to Unreal Engine for Two Minute Tutorials. Today we're going to talk about character movement replication using the character movement component. So we have our little level here with a couple start points. First we're going to go look at our player controller. You can see I put in a packet lag of 200 milliseconds again. And then we're going to go take a look at our character. So the first thing we're going to look at is what you'd expect, the standard movement inputs that come with any of the prepackaged um, projects like the first person shooter or the third person shooter it takes inputs like WASD for movement, turn rate from the mouse or turning from the mouse X and Y I added in here an up down E and Q so we can go look at our character so turning from the mouse inputs moving forward from WASD and up down from Q and E and these are all going to movement inputs so remember those are movement inputs here we have our jump you know, which is usually included too. That's pretty straightforward. So before we go into anything else, what I'm going to do is go look at our character movement here. So when you, if you want to do something besides, you know, walking, even crouching is not enabled by default. So you have to go to your character movement and go down to movement capabilities. And if you want to fly, you have to click this checkbox to allow your character to fly. So that'll allow him to fly. So what we have here in terms of replication is your character and its class defaults replicates and replicates movement. This character movement component will allow you, will handle your movements and handle all server replication and communication for add movement input, but not for anything else. It doesn't just blanket replicate everything you do. So let's say we move forward and move right using add movement input. That'll immediately respond on your client as well as send that information out to the server and then the server will replicate that information out to the other clients so you don't have to send a command out to the server wait for it to process it and get it back that will give you a delay in your controls so we're gonna look at all you know a few different options here so um, these will respond immediately we have the F key mapped to launch character and so what this will do is go and ask the server to run this event which will launch our character up and we're going to see that when you press the F key there's actually a delay on your client side so the server gets the information launches you and then the server is trying to synchronize your character's position so that's like sluggish controls you can't really can't really operate like that with any kind of lag going on um, and then here let's add another one in we'll do T and we'll just launch character locally and see how that behaves as well. So F and T. So F will do it on the server and T will do it locally. We'll go look down here. We have G and H mapped to setting our movement mode. So again, movement input is rep handled you know, locally, then sent to the network, and then replicated back to the clients. So you don't have to worry about telling the server what's going on on this add movement input mode. That's all handled. The, the character movement component is you know, extraordinarily complex, 8,000 lines of code. It gives me a headache just to open the file. So you know, I'm not really going to go into that here. This is just simple. How do I get it to work? And how do I get it to do what I expect? So the reason, so here I'm, if I press G, I go into movement mode flying. But what this is doing, it's calling a custom event I made that I told to run on the server and set the movement mode to flying which I said is the input I have my input here So the reason I can't do this locally is because this isn't replicated to the server like our movement input is so if I just tell him to do this locally he might be able to fly for a moment before the server overrides that setting it says hey I don't think you're flying so you're walking still but if we tell the server to do it, the server will replicate that back to the character. So let's go take a look at how this, how this all works. We should be able to move around fine. Uh, T should launch your character locally, but the server won't see it. F will launch your character on the server and transmit that back to the client, but you'll get a delayed, laggy response. So you can't do that either. And we have um, setting our movement mode on the server, so that will work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play. We have four players and no dedicated servers. So we're going to be able to see the players and how the server perceives everything. So let's take a look at all these behaviors. All right, so here we are. We can see in the upper left, client one, upper right, client two, 
lower left client 3 and the lower right is server. And the server is standing off to the side. I can see all three of us. I'm controlling client 1 which is the guy that's moving around right now. So you can see looking around that's handled well and moving, you know, walking around that's also handled well. So if, let's say I want to go into flying mode so I'll press G. Now I can use in the server set the mode so I can now use E to go up, Q to go down, where everything works just like moving back and forth. So I'm going to press H, go back into walking mode. So let's do the thing with the launch character and see how that behaves. So I'm going to press F, I'm going to try and hit it really loud so you can hear it on the mic. And what you're going to see is in the lower right, the server is going to jump first. And then, in a moment later, the clients are going to try and synchronize with what the server is doing. So I press F. You can see the server jump first and then the clients catch up. So you can imagine a player trying to control everything like that, movement, shooting, and if there's a 400 millisecond delay between when they try and do something, and execute, of course lag won't always be that bad, but if there's a delay, you know, it'll be uncomfortable for the player, it'll make games difficult if not impossible. So you don't want to do it like that. So we're going to take a look at also what T does. T tells the local client to launch. So you can see I press T and he jumps up, but no one else sees it, and he gets snapped back down because the server says, hey, I didn't see you jumping. So what are you doing up there? So again, we can go press G, go into flying mode, and press Q and E, go up and down, left and right, back and forth, and that all works well and is handled over the server. It's nice and smooth. So in review, we're going to just go back and take a quick look. The movement inputs are replicated, are applied to your local client, sent to the server, and replicated across the network. And that is all handled in here. You don't have to worry about it. It's wonderful. That's how these things work. You know, that's what's set up in Unreal Engine. For other things, you still need to tell the server, and the server can replicate that back out. Just, and things like this. So if you, if you want to do movement input, you're going to want to use these movement input components. Things like set velocity, you can tell the server to set velocity and it will replicate it out to the, back to the client, but again there will be a delay. So this was just a basic overview of how to get character movement replicating. And you probably could get this to work. This is how it's set up you know, in the example projects and it works. I also wanted to show you some of the things that don't work because again not everything is replicated even though replication is enabled. You have to explicitly tell it what to replicate and what not to. And you can see how these things behave. So doing something like setting the character velocity locally will not work. If you tell it the server, then you'll have a delay. So you really want to utilize these movement input components. And you can customize uh, scale values and world directions and things like that based on how you want your character to behave. So I hope this was useful. Um, it, it is a complicated and difficult subject. Uh, it's difficult for me to explain even the simple parts and I'm sure there's parts of it that weren't clear so if you have any questions leave a comment let me know tell me what you think and tell me what else you'd like to see a video on. I hope you enjoyed and until next time have fun.